Hello and welcome to my channel. This is going to be a bonus video on the long take series. If you have not seen the previous ones, you can tap on the screen above. Today we're going to be analyzing the opening sequence of Touch of Evil. Yay. Let's dive right in. It's a strategically shot scene wherein the first frame we see is the one of the ticking time bomb. The shot begins with the perpetrator setting the time bomb in the car as his engulfing shadow runs across the wall. Metaphorically, an unknown figure that can go to any heights of evil. Strategically, the shadow has a separate low angle lighting which makes it look much taller on the wall than it actually may be in reality. There is already a short-lived sense of time established wherein we anticipate the bomb to go off any second from the point that the couple ride away in the car. We move on from there to a high angle shot, almost the equivalent of an omnipresent view, quite literally because only we know of the impending doom awaiting the couple. The car then passes by from behind the building where we track parallelly across it. This is where the space unfolds and expands as a whole where we see the amount of damage the bomb can actually do. With people walking around and ahead on stoppages, physical stop signs, and all the times the car actually stops. We inherently want the car to drive away as fast as it can so that we can have the least of damages, quite intelligently orchestrated as it quite literally brings out the touch of evil from within us. At the first stoppage, we see several groups of people and cars passing by as the camera tracks back to reveal an even bigger picture where the car moves from the foreground to the midground and at the end, almost encompassing itself within the background. We're almost awaiting the bomb, anticipating it constantly. The established sense of impending doom brings about a stringent sense of temporality within the shot. Temporality is a state of existing within or having a relationship with time and is passing. To put it simply, a long take is one that has a temporality associated with the shot, with either the use of multiple timelines within the shot or time compression or shots that are subjective enough for a long duration so as to make us a viewer in the picture of what's on screen as well as off screen and or if a shot is extended for a long duration with enough duress and information to sustain a viewer that we lose the perception of real time with respect to cinematic time. A long take therefore aims to place us in the exact moment in the present sense whilst being an unbiased, unobstructed medium which helps us empathize and experience everything in first person. It makes us a bystander instead of a viewer. There's an incessant feeling of curiosity. At the second stoppage, another couple is introduced this is where the temporality starts to layer itself. At first, we think they're just passerbys. As the car closes in on them in a very tight space, it almost teases us with the use of spatial elements and how unpredictable this whole situation could get by having the car right in the foreground and the couple in the midground with an almost black, dark background relating to what can become of their future. Intelligent framing, which transgresses further when we start tracking and following the newly introduced couple instead. Now a new timeline is introduced. A deep sense of temporality is evoked wherein we're constantly wondering what's happening off screen. Is the car far away by now? How much collateral damage is it going to have? Is it going to explode with a lot of people around? I want to see it explode. We have no visual clue whatsoever. There's quite something about this couple that makes us wonder and fantasize about them from the very beginning. The closing in framing at the beginning, their contrasting clothing in monochrome with only them in focus, their stature and pacing combined with their confident and young loving stride. The music adds to it. It gives us a benign sense of a fresh relationship. Intriguing. But the bomb? It makes us want to not think of them. Think of the impending doom instead. It also makes us wonder whether these two are related in a way or if they're going to cross paths again. At this point, we want them to be safe, amongst all others. The sense of temporality is almost seeping us away as we already know the couple in the car are circling the drain. There is constant affirmation of the space's camaraderie with the crowd currently spiraling in the space. The newly introduced couple walk in the foreground as their timelines merge again. The couple pass by the car as it waits for another stoppage to come to an end. Again, at the stoppage, we see a whole lot of crowd just awaiting their perpetual demise. Tension builds constantly. We see a pack of goats on the way, but more about that in a minute. The couple walks ahead in the foreground as the car makes its way through the background, almost coinciding with each other laterally. At what seems to be a dividing toll stoppage, we see various visual cues, slow, go slow, etc., which accentuates the tension as at the same time, literally mocking us and our sense of perceived time. The couple in the car walk from either side of the toll as they diverge and converge again in their respective timelines. The literal and physical divergence and convergence can be a literary device 
conveying the statures of their respective timelines. The car and the couple both merge within the mid-ground of the frame where we see multiple people and cars at a junction, both in the foreground and the background. Two policemen are spotted in the mid-ground, which gives us a slight ray of hope as they are discernibly suspicious. More about that in a minute. As they close in and converge truly in the foreground, they are at a stoppage point which seems to be the border check of sorts. They're entering USA from Mexico, as seen in the frame, where they are questioned about their nationality. This picturesque treatment almost seems like the denouement of the scene as we anticipate the bomb to blow away. This is followed by a long conversation about the couple and how the man just acquired the business of a great family. Here we hold on to the frame as it becomes static. It almost endangers our sense of time in relevance to the time elapsed and how long remains until the bomb blows everyone to shreds. The couple pass the car by and move further into the background as the policemen inquire about the couple in the car and their nationality, etc. Here the timelines have diverged again, sort of making me feel relieved, but not quite. The lady brings up the question that remains unbeknownst to everyone. Well, everyone except us. Hey, hey, I got this... You're American citizen, miss? No, I got this ticking noise. Yeah, okay. No, really, this Good ticking night. noise in my head. We see the two policemen we saw at the toll, again at the front here, with something disastrous that has passed from within their reach. We see them and the system in all its entirety in the foreground as the camera tracks further towards the couple again. The camera is almost functioning as a glowing ball of awareness in our minds, wherein it focuses us to see and think about what the camera wants us to, guiding the story forward. The car goes off screen again, but somehow we feel relieved since the other half of the space isn't revealed in what seems to be a space where the car can speed away. There is but a benign sense of relief. Here she brings up the fact that Mike is visiting the United States of America for the first time with her. Mike, do you realize this is the very first time we've been together in my country? After which Mike wittingly leans in to kiss her, and as anticipating as ever. Do you realize I haven't kissed you in over an hour? The bomb goes off the very second we see them kiss. More about that in a minute. The sound elements are intricately placed and orchestrated, wherein we hear the ticking from the very first frame as the perpetrator sets their demise on the time bomb. It pans from left to right, almost teasing the audience. We hear some apparent diegetic music from a theatre or an entertainment area of sorts, sounds which have a direct or implied and or apparent source in the frame which then merges or is overlapped and or replaced by the music from the car radio as soon as it starts. It nicely merges with the other apparent sounds that sound non diegetic at times. The music from the car is apparent and loud with respect to the car's on-screen and off-screen location. Other diegetic sounds include the whistling of the policeman which catches us off guard, the goats, car honks, etc. At the end when the lady in the car cites the ticking noise in her mind, we almost hear an orchestrated ticking-like sound from the footsteps of the people walking around. As the car passes away, music almost fades but is still apparent, sources being the restaurants and cafes and or bars alongside the roads. The space is established as one that would have these sounds, which makes them diegetic. The shot works well as a continuous shot rather than a multiple shot because the ever-elusive sense of temporality, the anticipation and curiosity, the on and off screen space, the diverging and converging nature of the timelines would otherwise be not as evident. The simultaneity of the two parallel time zones is of the essence. The framing and spatial elements come out in all their glory as the camera tracks all the way, almost in a vehicle-like fashion which allows for different dynamic elements to exist within the foreground, mid-ground or the background as and when required or deemed necessary. Narrative arc establishes the characters within the car as either bait or random people who have been endangered as a terrorist attack is in its might or people who have been specifically targeted for the same. My bet is on the second one. The exposition of the other couple is not impetuously planned and is meticulously unveiled when we hear that the man is making his first visit to the states and is actually a man talked about by many as he is credited for acquiring one of the grandee businesses which is then coupled with the eventual but certain doom of the other couple in the car that travels very closely with reference to the newlywed couple. Let's take a look at many of the micro-narratives involved with The first one would be Goat. The pack of goats play a symbolical role for me as a newly introduced couple is trapped within the proximity of the space with an impending doom associated with it, let alone all the people there. The goat ends up becoming a figurative representation of it all. Another symbolical role it plays for me in my mind is the fact that it's Mr. Vargas' first time out here in the United States with his lady and how it strikes an image of the country and or the system as a whole. 
It speaks of his situation and how he is entrapped in this dicey scenario. Number two, America. I only speak from conjecture when I say this, but the idea of a losing nationality within the Americans, I feel, is another role that is symbolized within the end sequence where the men inquire about respective nationalities, but let people of various nationalities in anyway, and are quite easygoing, reluctant, and nonchalant about the same. I feel this sums up the lost nationality of the United States from back then as well, as they searched for their true meaning and defining self as a nation in a whole. It also foreshadows quite dastardly of what can be the resultant of the aforementioned. Number 3. American System On how the policemen are easygoing and less persuasive and quite inquisitive about capitalism and its greatest produced results. Number 4. Some lives cost more. On the passerby's note and how it only adds to a bigger picture but not on a personal level. Number 5. Hats There's a passerby that traverses with a cart full of various shapes and sizes of hats. The hat represents authority and power. The covered head shows nobility and different hats signify different orders within the social hierarchy. It also speaks of classism and the differentiation that it may lead to. Many of the people walking amidst the crowd are people wearing hats. Number 6. Coincidence and the sense of natural selection. This entails the entirety of this film. If I take only this shot into consideration, it has a high sense of parallel with coincidences and a sly sense of natural selection. And how? That would be it for this video. Like and comment below and tell me what you think or what movie you want me to cover next. Alright then, until next Thursday. Just kidding. Did you get any of that?